everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. My name is Alex. I'm standing outside Stamford Bridge after a 3-2 win against Leeds. I'm here with Dan. Uh, Dan, I mean, after the cup final, you did the watch along for that yes, game, so I yeah. didn't actually get to hear your thoughts. Um, we'll, we'll go from what you saw on Sunday. Yeah. Do you have contradicting feelings based on what we saw today? No, I don't. I, I'm really deflated. The, the weekend really got me down. I think actually the 90 minutes I could get behind a little bit but then I think extra time we fell off we all know that tonight I felt like we never really got going we're playing against a good lead side but not their strongest squad by any means and we've been challenged I always knew tonight was going to be tough we obviously had a lot of minutes in the, like to recover from and we haven't probably done much tactical analysis and working on that on the training ground for this game but I felt like again clueless really downbeat I mean that goal went in so early from some appalling football I mean Poch has rotated for me it doesn't feel like that was a team he was choosing to save his job if it's on the line at all so he must feel pretty comfortable and I know you're trying to stick by him and be patient but tonight gave me no additional reason to believe even with the win? No, nah, like we've got lucky with that win. I mean, it's a deflected goal. We've done okay. Do you know what? Actually, a couple of goals that we, we scored today, we took really well. Like that, that Mudrick goal, the whole build-up of that is really nice. And I feel like occasionally at home, we've seen that a little bit more than we've seen away some goals like that. They've been pretty good. But other than that, there's just so many things where I question what he's trying to get us to do. We're playing out from the back with no idea. You've got the goalkeeper who's barely played a game recently shouting at players that have been playing every week, telling them to do something different. We actually set up differently how we played out tonight than we've done with Petrovic because he doesn't play out from the back. I feel like we look like a better side when we we limit our game to playing out, like not playing out from the back. With Sanchez, against a team like Leeds who are going to have that German counter-pressing style of football because of their manager Daniel Fark, we just invited them on again and they ultimately scored from that within seconds and then we never really stopped doing it all game but we haven't done that every week so it's just really confusing I feel like Pochettino doesn't know whether he's coming or going with what he's doing and he sits down what, what, and tactically yeah tactically I don't think he's ever tried to get a connection with the fan base I, I'm just so you, deflated by him you know it's so interesting you're the second person we've spoken about uh, about connecting with the fans and Pochettino but I think that ultimately with without results you cannot connect with fans I do think that you could come over and applaud them more but in my in my history even with one of the best managers in recent time, Thomas Tuchel, he did not come and clap the fans as much as people say he did unless we were getting those results. If we lost week in, week out, Tuchel was not clapping the fans. And by the way, I'm not shitting on Thomas Tuchel, but I'm saying it's the same for a lot of managers. And I think ultimately, if Pochettino starts getting results, you're going to see him come and, and try to connect. Because until that point, I think even he knows that people don't really want him and people don't like what they're seeing. I've got to disagree, mate. Like, I, I see what you're saying about Tuchel, and I'll back you on that 100%. Tuchel got a lot of love from the fans without giving us a lot of love back in a way. I think he just, he loved it, but he never really showed it in the exact way. You know, like Conte, in the crowd. Mourinho was like in front of all of us, like giving it the bigger. And like, Tuchel was never really like that, but he showed his gratitude when we put the banner up and things like that. And obviously he won us what he did, and we loved him, and we sang his song every week. Um, we obviously got that connection ripped away from us in a little bit and that's probably why it's, it, it feels a bit strange having a, like we got Potter in and it never really connected and then we got um, Lampard back in an attempt to try and reconnect us with the club and that didn't really work out, we all know how that went and then and then we get a Spurs, an ex-Spurs manager who no one's 100% sold on and it probably wasn't our first target for a lot of fans. And I feel like he hasn't ever really done anything to connect. And I know you said a few people have said that, but it just reminds me of Rafa. And Rafa was actually doing okay with us in Europe and we ended up winning something. But this Pochettino, I I'm just not having him, mate. And I don't think he's having Chelsea fans. And I feel like that's a huge disparity between all of us. And for me right now, in like, he's just come out in his press conference and said, we've had a fantastic four weeks. Like, how deluded are you to say that? You can't say that, Alex. What does that say about him? It tells me that he's happy with not winning the cup final. He's happy with that performance that he's got against Leeds United tonight because ultimately it's a win and he's in the next round of the cup. But it tells me that he's happy to be the bridesmaid, never the bride. And I'm so fed up. And like this week, I, was, I found it really tough after his comments like when I heard that potentially he said about penalties and now he's denying it and there's no smoke without fire. 
someone somewhere has made the decision that we'd play for penalties at the weekend and ultimately he is the bo- he's the manager of that team he can overrule that and he hasn't you don't think you'd hear so, Jose sorry, or sorry. so you're saying one of the assistants players assistants right. someone's made that decision apparently that we would rather play for penalties than fight in extra time that's the talk that's coming out that's what's been said Pochettino if he does if he doesn't agree with that can overrule it but I'm just not seeing it. I don't think he's he's not promoting leadership in this team. He's not promoting leadership from the sidelines because I watched Daniel Fart tonight. He never sat down and he's fighting and, and Leeds didn't stop because the manager kept giving him messages, instructions, keep doing this, press, press, press. Like, Potts just sits down. He just sits down and he just gives it up. And it's so frustrating to see Poch be the manager of Chelsea Football Club and not have a connection with the manager. And I wanted to give him time. And I, I'm, I'm just not seeing enough evidence for me to rekindle this relationship. I'm Poch out. I know you're trying to back him. Are you seeing evidence to suggest that he is the right guy going into net? We've chatted about this loads, but are you? Well, my evidence would be look at his career. And, you know, he has come from worse situations than this and played much better football. Um, Definitely played better football, but I don't know about worse situations. This has got to be the worst it's ever been. For well, let's, let's, look at, let's look at where he took Southampton. Yeah. We know how that went, you know, and then he got the Tottenham job. And Southampton were never as bad as what we are right now, though. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that you know, he's going to revolutionise things straight away. But, but my thing is this, if, if we had Abramovich, if we had the same players as we had under Abramovich, he's got to go. Yeah. You know, you've got Ramirez, you've got Mikel, you've got Terry, you've got even the players from five years ago, you know, uh, Hazard, Aspie, players like that. I completely get it. I'd be saying potch out. For me, the players aren't good enough to improve that quickly. And, you know, ultimately, you can question his coaching, but actually, we've had very good coaches that have made the team look bad at times as well. Mourinho had a shocking season. Conte, when we finished fifth, we had some absolutely disastrous games. And they were very well-structured teams when they were playing well. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that I like everything I'm seeing this season. But I, I, I just believe that, ultimately, he doesn't have enough pieces in the puzzle to connect. And when he gets those pieces, then I'll judge him. Now, we don't get Europe. Mm. I can't say too much to, to defend him. But if we do get Europe, even if that's conference, I think he deserves a chance to ride that up and see if we can progress again. Remember, he's only on a two-year contract. Mm. If the owners aren't happy by that point, they don't even have to pay him off. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that, that if he manages to somehow make sure that this team gets European football, whether that's through the FA Cup or that's through the league, then I think he would deserve the chance just because of what he's achieved on paper. But I'm not seeing the evidence in how the team are playing. I don't know if I agree completely with the players. Like We've got some players that I think a better coach would get so much more out of. And then I think we've got some players who are potentially at their level. I think Mudrick, that's probably his level. I think playing against Leeds, there were spells where he looked pretty good. Anyone better than championship opposition, I'm just not seeing it with him. Like He was useless at the weekend. I've, not, I've said it before, I've not seen him look good since his debut. And genuinely, if he was loaned out or sold to non-Premier League opposition, I wouldn't mind. So, I, I really wouldn't. So if you were to keep one of the players for next season out of Madrid to Madueke, who would that be? Madueke. I just feel like Madueke, there's a player in there and I think under a better manager, he could be unlocked. I think Ro- he's a little bit more robust. I think he offers a little bit more directness than Madrid. I feel like Madrid could be so direct, could be a very good player. And we saw glimpses tonight. His finish, exceptional. Um, a couple of crossfield passes were really good, and I felt like, oh my gosh, this is the best I've seen Madrid play. Then second half, you move back out to the wing, and it's just really disappointing again. Heavy touches, yeah. not controlling the ball well. well I mean, that, what that tells me is that Madrid plays better when he's not a winger. I, I wouldn't disagree with you. What I saw tonight, I think he found, he found a lot of space in that sort of 10 role that Gallagher's kind of been picking up this season. But ultimately, there are other players in this team that Pochettino isn't getting the tune out of that he should. Enzo hasn't been great under Pochettino. We saw a better Enzo under Potter, a better Enzo, maybe not under Lampard, but Pochettino's not got the best out of him. Pochettino actually is getting a good job out of Jackson, which is if you ask me what Poch is renowned for, it's getting a tune out of his strikers. And he is getting a tune out of Jackson. It's another goal tonight. Like, I genuinely think he's doing 
a good job there, but other players, he's very limited in terms of what he's getting from them. And that's where I feel like a better manager could come in and make something happen. I get what you're saying about giving him the time and giving him the right tools, but he's got some very good tools at the moment that could get even better and he's not pushing them in the right direction enough. I suppose if he got the time, we know if we're right or wrong, but if he doesn't get the time, we're never going to know. No, if he'd have lost tonight, he would have had to go though, wouldn't he? So it's onwards, he, he's like papering over some cracks, I'd say, with a result like tonight. And potentially, we go into this Brentford game with a win and hopefully a little bit of momentum. Bar and, and look, even that final, 90 minutes, it's a nil-nil draw against Liverpool. So if you look at who we've played, Liverpool, Villa, City, Palace, and now this Leeds game, that's five games within 90 minutes that we've actually done okay. We haven't lost yet in terms of those 90 minutes, which is the majority of the games we're going to play this season are going to be 90-minute games, right? And I think, okay, my biggest concern is is that the strength of Pochettino is, is meant to be the fitness and the physicality and there were players being sick in pre-season it was meant to be this game-changing approach to fitness we look exhausted we looked exhausted the other day at Wembley in a lot of games this season the fitness has been questionable that's his strong point that's his number one go-to is that we're going to be fitter than every other team we played Liverpool didn't have a bead of sweat on them after 120 minutes what is going on there like we do not look as fit as what's being suggested. And injury-wise, this is the worst it's ever been. Our squad looks so shallow at the moment. So if that's what he prides himself on and his fitness comes before his tactics, well, he's not getting that right either at the moment. And, and it is concerning me a little bit because what is Pochettino getting right? And I'd love to just like see what other people think. So like in the comments, if people want to tell me what they think Poch is getting right, I'm sure me and you could have some fun reading through them because I'm not seeing enough at the moment to suggest that Chelsea Football Club are going in the right direction and the young players that we're building for when Pep and Klopp are meant to leave for that future, for us to dominate and step into that gap, I don't think the players are going to be there on time if Pochettino's our manager.